Really? Yeah, true. Oh, wow. Fighting oh, in Miami. Uh, fight at Dolphins practice that reportedly featured oh, a that's near. That's coming up. We're not there yeah, yet, buddy. buddy. You threw away the Gosh, script Gosh, darn it. I got so, DJ Moore is so ready to afford your $110 million attention. Million double dip. You got excited. <laughs> We're too excited about the Miami fight. Coming up in a few minutes, there's a suplex there. <laughs> Dolphins practice. DJ Moore signed a four-year $110 million extension. Uh, locking down another weapon in Caleb Williams' arsenal. Here's the company that DJ Moore kept last year with 1,300 receptions and eight touchdowns. Pretty, Pretty good. good. Yeah. yeah. Um, so is there any reason for Caleb not to thrive? Well, I don't think so. Listen, they, as is the case with a lot of quarterbacks, you'd like to have a slightly better offensive line, but I don't think it's a disaster oh, offensive right. line. Yeah. Right. They. I really like their right tackle. You like their center, and then they're gonna, you know, they're trying to work in progress on the other spots. But there's no, very few teams like the Lions and the Eagles have great offensive lines left to right, and then everyone else there's spots you, you don't love. I think he is, at a minimum, walking into the best situation of any number one overall pick since Andrew Luck, and maybe of any number one overall pick at the quarterback position ever, because it what they weren't the number one. They didn't have the worst record in football. Carolina did. And then they add Roma Dunze. They bring in DeAndre Swift. And so I don't love that he doesn't have an offensive-minded head coach, but they brought in the offensive coordinator from Seattle that people like a lot, yep. you know, to help there. So, I listen, I think Caleb is a blue chip, 10 out of 10 on the talent scale. And I think what also helps him coach is – when you come into a franchise who has never had a player throw for 30 touchdowns, never had a player throw for 4,000 yards, just good play will be met with, you know, a damn near a parade. So, no, I, I don't think there is any reason that he won't have an excellent season if he's the player I believe that he is. He's coming into a really good situation, and the benefit of him having a defensive-minded head coach is last year when, when Matt took it over, the defense got a lot better. The thing that Caleb has to understand is he doesn't have to go out and make plays every single play. He doesn't have to go out and, 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 and try to, to uh, do what he had to do in college, which, which is constantly generate <coughs> points, give him a chance because they're getting beat up so much. This is a, a totally different format, and he's also got to take a leadership role. He's got, he, th these are men. These are people with families, and just because you've been anointed the Savior doesn't, doesn't mean that you are the Savior. You've got to go prove to those guys that you, can, you, you merit the pick that, that, that they gave you and the responsibility that they gave you, and you've got to do that not only by making plays but also being able to lead and be mature. Look, I like Caleb a lot. I think he'll be great one day. But I, I think there are definite reasons he won't thrive this year. I think number one is, is he's a rookie. Like, C.J. Stroud is the exception, not the rule. Trevor Lawrence was as touted as, yep. as C. Caleb. And obviously, I know he went into a bad situation. But even the last two years, he's been good, but not, like, phenomenal. All right, Bryce Young. Now, I know he wasn't Caleb Williams, but people loved him. He's smaller. But still, he struggled. Not a great situation, but he struggled as well. And I think, so I think being a rookie, I think more often than not, you take your lumps. Then you come out and light the, the league on fire. And I think the second reason, Nick, is the expectations, which you, you're, you might be leading it and others are looking at them as reaching the Super Bowl, which no rookie quarterback's ever done. So I think that people constantly saying he's in the best situation of a number one pick. That is going to create expectations, and we know that can create more pressure. Mm -hmm. And even if he's good, even if they get to the playoffs as a wild card and maybe lose in the first round, which would be a nice season, a lot of people will be like, eh. No, nobody maybe will feel that. Expectations are high. With that. I mean, they haven't had a okay. winning season in a little while in Chicago. Right. and. I, Look, he is coming into a, a really good situation for a guy who's been drafted number one overall. Um, quickly, because we've got to go to break and talk yes. about that dolphin story. That is, <laughs> that is How did your date go? Oh, it's Thursday night. Oh, it's Thursday? <laughs> yeah, third date with the oh, fair so. Super Bowl take. I'll, wow. get, I'll let you know on Friday. <laughs> what is, oh, wait, oh, bro. This, that does not wow. that's, work. Oh, that's for the, what is the that? next segment. Hey, the bull uh, fighting in Miami. A fight at Dolphins practice that reportedly featured a near suplex energized the team and might be a sign of a new identity for Miami. Bully ball. 
That would be beneficial according to Tyreek Hill. I think the fight we had today was amazing. We needed that. Teams that I've been on that one, those teams fought. They're going to fight in the locker room. In fact, they're going to play ping pong. This is where you fight. A wild, so that's not in the quotes. That's so not in the quote. I added that. Quoting. <laughs> I added the ping pong part. Uh, Brew, are you buying the fighting Dolphins? Tyreek knows. He knows they were break dancers last year. He wants this. But no, they're still going to be break dancers. And that's not all bad. Offensively, they're going to be entertaining. They're going to be exciting. It's going to be full-on shabadoo, turbo, crazy legs, whatever you want to call them. All right? It's going to be fun. But then, Coach, when it gets cold outside, you don't see the break dancers out there. All right? Or if somebody takes your cardboard, now you got some trouble <laughs> dude, doing your spins and all that. So that's the issue. They are when, – when the good teams yeah. that will come and take your, cardboard, take your cardboard or in this cold outside, it's hard to break dance. Mm-hmm. So that's when they'll have their problems. And this is really about the defense. I think the offense is going to be great, especially against mediocre to bad teams. But defensively, you lost Vic Fangio. Which, uh, I know you I mean, got these I mean, they, two don't they, like Vic they Fangio. They ran him Me out and Coach of like, he, he is a good de- defensive okay, well, player. they didn't think so. Right, Christian Wilkins, uh, all right, Andrew Van Ginkle, like yeah. those are arguably certainly two of their best Christian defensive Wilkins players. Best. Now, I do like the defensive backfield, but I just think up front. So, I don't think they're going to be good enough defensively. Yeah. One of the things that you find as, as you talk to different people in analytics is they always point to which teams fight. Because there's a definite correlation between <laughs> your inability to control your emotions and the amount of games you win. That's exactly what you're looking for. Is is is, is all the empirical data of hey, I, I can't I can't get my head around my emotions. I'm going to fight someone with a helmet on, so therefore I must be tough. Yeah, we we it's seen it over and over again. All all you're going to do is you're going to hurt somebody. You're going to hurt yourself. And and it's 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 not a badge of honor to not be able. To, to, to gather your emotions in, in a situation where you're frustrated. It, it's the opposite. And what, what's, what's Miami dealt with? They couldn't beat any playoff teams, right? They're one and six against playoff teams, and they were ten and one against teams that, that, that weren't playoff teams. And, and having a fist fight or, or having something related to the UFC breakout, that doesn't help you. That Ca- doesn't help you at all. Counterpoint, I do think the last couple of years, league leader in training camp fights is Travis Kelsey. So, okay, put that in the analytics <laughs> crock pot yeah, and spin it be, around. That, that'll be really uh, good. <laughs> but, so here's the thing. I actually, I think, because there was like evidently Jalen Ramsey gave an impassioned speech that the owner heard and he kept talking about that we want to be the bully this mm-hmm. year and then other players quoted it. I think they are sick of the breakdancer label. I think the problem is, and Brew keyed on at least part of what I think, I just don't think they have enough good big people to avoid being, you know what I mean, break dancers to use our parlance. I think their offensive line got worse in the offseason, and I know their defensive front seven got worse. And so, listen, I think they have a great or very good defensive backfield, and we know they have elite weapons, and we know Tua in warm weather against bad opponents can cook with those weapons, I just don't think they have the personnel to be a punch-you-in-the-mouth team, figuratively, not literally. And I think is, that works is, against Is Kansas them. City fighting enough to three-peat? What? Well, I don't know. Listen, <laughs> I, I know you're joking. I thought last year when Kelsey kept punching people in practice, it showed they weren't resting on their laurels. Coach, oh, they're so Coach was in it. I know. I, I, told, I told Coach yesterday. When were you I in it? You. Well, when Tony episode, says, yeah. when Tony says, I got to go too, say coach. hi to the man that genius. Ultimate, oh, yes. <laughs> Yeah. you got to go back and watch the whole series. How's it end? <laughs> Today, uh, the closing of the Cowboys Super Bowl window. Are fans already bailing on the Cowboys? Looks like it. Meanwhile, Saquon, a game changer. Some people say he's going to be Christian McCaffrey-esque. Uh, yes. And one eagle. Here. I don't think so. I think I, I was the first. <laughs> <laughs> to say he's going to have a McCaffrey or Here's impact. the thing, Did Sports Illustrated? Nine, you, are, you are sometimes as up to date with other people's sports takes as you are very popular television shows. <laughs> So you just think you're so the So other people, I, I, I had not heard somebody say it before I said it. That's you know what? I'm going to be the first, you're the first too. Okay, all right. Well, you're the first. Right. <laughs> NFL Top 100 he doesn't released 11 through 20. Um, we're taking a look at the QBs. Dak is coming in at 16. Jalen Hurts came in at 15. Here's how their numbers lined up last year. 
Um, according to this, well, Dak did a little bit better, even though he's behind Jalen Hurts. So who would you rather have this year, Nick? Listen, I'd rather have Dak. I, I have real questions that I think are totally fair and reasonable about how good is Jalen Hurts. I feel like I know who Dak Prescott is. Dak Prescott is, at best, the 8th, and at worst, the 12th best quarterback in football, who it would appear really, really cooks in games he's supposed to and struggles a, get, a bit more than the typical quarterback, good quarterback does, against the very best, but is not tripping up against bad teams the way a lot of quarterbacks sure. do, and you know kind of what you're getting. I have no idea what I'm getting with Jalen Hurts. I know I'm getting good. I know exactly what I'm getting from him after the game and before the game. Great quotes. It's seemingly, you know, good leadership, not just seemingly impeccable character by all accounts and by uh, observation. But this is a player who I watched in college. I was like, that's not an NFL franchise quarterback. Who I watched his first year, his second year. It was like, not an NFL franchise quarterback. And last year, didn't look like an NFL franchise quarterback. However, that one year I didn't mention, year three, was outstanding, and it culminated with the only excellent playoff game of his career, but that happened to be in the Super Bowl, where he was an A-plus, essentially, right. made one mistake. Mm -hmm. And so I just don't know what I'm going to get from that player. And so I think Dak had a better season. I think Dak has had a better career. And so I think Dak is the better player, even though I, you know, I'd be nervous about paying Dak all that money. My reservations about Dak are well established. So for me, Brew, it's Dak Prescott. Look, I think that's fair what you said. I do think Dak should have been rated ahead of like lower, I guess, than Jalen in this. Closer to the, one. The, yeah, these rankings are are, are odd. Terrible. Because most of the time, and you they are going by what'd you do, what have you done for us lately? So Joe Burrow, because he was hurt, is 39th. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers is 92nd. Everybody seems to have been held to that standard except Jalen Hurts. I agree. Because, right, he's ahead of Dak. Obviously, was better last year. And so, Hurts last year was third on the list based yeah, on yeah. his so amazing season right, the year right. before. So, yeah. so I don't, I, he shouldn't have been this high. But that said, and I agree with everything you said, Dak is clearly a better passer. There's no question about that. But I would take Jalen because wow. I think both of these teams are S-Bop. And I do believe Jalen has shown to be better in the big games, the playoff games in particular. Here are a few numbers. Now, look, Dak's 2-5, and five, we know. Jalen's only 2-3. and three. Yeah. But in his last four playoff games, Jalen's had no interceptions, and he's had three uh, ratings of 100 or more in the last four playoff games. Dak, in his last two playoff games, has had four interceptions, and he's only had two times where he was 100 or more rating in seven playoff can, can, games. Can I respond to that real quick, though? Because two of those, one of those 100-plus ratings, what he threw for 150 yards in that but blowout those were of the blowout, Giants. Like, right, and so and, they're, not, they're not putting but, it up as a, much, but I don't blame him for that. But another one, Brew, was the – nobody can argue – that anyone on the Eagles, Jalen Hurts included, played well in that playoff game against the Bucs. Right. Now, and yeah. I, the, his, I think his, pass, I think his numbers was or looked like fine. That. But they were – I mean, I think they lost 32-9, to nine, and they looked out of it from the opening snap. So, I, I just, in my he opinion – like, blown – I'm it, not going to put it all on Dak last year, but Dak – No, Dak, 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 Dak played poor, very poorly, yes. Playoff. And, and, and when you look at last year, I, everybody feels the pain of, of Dallas losing to Green Bay, and there's a lot of backlash on Dak for that. But the defense played – yeah, they really were poorly, and and they didn't really have a chance in that game. So so there's that emotion of what the expectation was, how they performed, and so you feel that. But with Jalen Hurts, that was a slow bleed there that he did nothing about during that losing streak that that they had or that that losing period, yes. culminating in in the like the whisper at the end of the season in the playoff game. And I'm I'm mm. w with. With Nick on it, over the course of his career, he's had, uh, I think, one losing season. Dak's had one losing season. He's been better in every single category. They're both they're both similar type guys, but I would probably lean towards towards Dak as well, based off of off of his body of work. Go ahead, Walt. You're you're definitely Jalen, huh? Yeah. Why? Because uh, I saw one guy play awesome in the Super Bowl, and I saw I see one guy consistently melt down in the playoffs. What's Dak's ceiling? 
Do you do we think Dak's ceiling? Do we think Dak Prescott do, can get to do, the Super Bowl? Do I think so? Let's let's talk about how Jalen got to the Super Bowl. Let's just talk about it real quick. Do I? If well, you're asking, could I do out, that? So do I think that Dak good. Prescott on the 2022 Eagles, oh, if he were if he I'll were in his it. first playoff game playing the Giants, who he beats like a drum every year, twice a year, and in the second playoff game playing the Niners without a quarterback? Do I think that, that, that they, was a little bit but, fortunate? Don't right, but right. that's how he got to the Super but Bowl. But then Jalen was Jalen was ex. Was no, great no the and, and I said that on the front end. But I have seen, I saw Dak Prescott in the first playoff game of his life play peak Aaron Rodgers. Now, I, obviously, Rodgers doesn't play defense, but go toe to toe with Rodgers in that game, and they lost because Rodgers made an amazing throw down the sideline, and then Mason Crosby had the kind of the, the double uh, hook a field goal. And I've all, I saw Dak blow out a Tom Brady Bucks team in a playoff game. I've seen Dak be great in individual playoff games. Yeah. Do I question if Dak can be great in three or four consecutive playoff games? Yes. But I have that exact same question about Jalen. I think that's why I brought it, up the the Jalen's it, playoff. Yeah. It's interesting. The two games you brought up where he was great. I mean, you you could say they were. I don't know if they're officially underdogs, but, but the expectations are lower. The last few playoff games for Dak, the expectations have been high. Like you're supposed to go out there and be great and win. And that's what he hasn't lived up well, to. Well, hold on. That they didn't what, really have a chance against Green Bay the way that they were but, walking up and down I, on the defense. But I thought the offense didn't help either. Like, no, I, I agree no, that the was, defense was bad. Dak, to me, Dak was good in the second half when it was basically but, over. But the, we should, and again, I have been, I think, fairly critical of Dak. We should be fair about prior to this year what happened in the playoffs. The, the year before last, he beat Tom Brady, the, the, the Bucks. That was the scoring, boring playoff game. Yeah. And then they the lost. The Bucks were to, not a good team. They lost. Then. Say it again. Right. The Bucks the were not a good team. The no, Bucks were averaging like were 19 bad, yeah. points or no, something. Right. And they were, I think, in the playoffs because they had had a pretty good defense all year, and the Cowboys they, annihilated. They, I know, but were they above the, 500 that year? The, they were either nine and eight or eight and nine. I don't. I don't know. But the like you beat his a, last I think two beat playoff games against the Niners. You like what I mean, he's he done? Gotta, no. You also got to be worried about Jalen Hurts. He's thrown as many picks this year as he did the previous two years. You know, he got paid, and now the pressure's on him. He's trying to make plays, and now it's a turnover. This is a huge year for him because he's got all the weapons in the world. Well, so. that's the other piece of it. The other piece of it is is that I do think Jalen has been the last couple years in a better weapon situation than Dak has been in. I don't think that's very deniable. CD's excellent, but the Eagles have had the better offensive line. Cowboys have good offensive line. Eagles have had either the best or second best. Eagles, the Cowboys Running have one great win. receiver. Uh, the Eagles Pollard's have two great receivers. And the Eagles have had at least a slightly better running back situation than the Cowboys the last couple of years. So I just that, – that, that, again, yeah. I'm not trying to make excuses for Dak, but the, no. when – to say – that he melts down in the playoffs, it's fair and not. When they have lost to the Niners the two years prior to this past year, the Niners were better than the Cowboys. The, this year, the Packers game, yes, the even terrible deck also looked terrified, and to me that was a meltdown. I agree with that. But I, I don't think it's you know, as simple as he plays poorly in the playoffs every game. Josh Allen makes his appearance on the list at number 12, down four spots from last year when he was at eight. Take a look at Josh's numbers last year. Uh, total TDs, touchdowns, uh, excuse me, turnovers, 44 touchdowns, 22 turnovers. Um, so, uh, too high, too low, or just right? So, this, I mean, I, I'm fine with this. This is, oh, he's only going to be behind Mahomes and Lamar. The, we can show you, if we can, all the quarterbacks who have been ranked so you can see where they are. Uh, but Josh is for the fourth consecutive year going to either be the third or fourth highest rated quarterback in the league. In fact, he moved up. In the previous three years, he has been behind uh, Mahomes, Aaron, and Tom three years ago. Mahomes, Aaron, and Tom two years ago. Last year, he was behind Mahomes, Jalen, and Joe Burrow. And this year, he's behind only Mahomes and Lamar. And this is why I feel like the whining from his GM about, oh, woe is Josh, he's so unfairly critiqued, is just nonsense. Every guy ahead of him, when this list comes out every year, has massive accomplishments that he has nothing close to. You're behind Mahomes, you're behind Aaron Rodgers, you're behind Tom Brady. It's a dozen MVPs between them damn near. And literally, 
a dozen or almost a dozen Super Bowls between them. When you're behind uh, Jalen Hurts and Joe Burrow, it's because they've been to the last two Super Bowls. You're behind Lamar this year. He's won two MVPs. Like, Josh Allen is consistently considered the second or third best quarterback in football when throughout history, in order to be considered that, you almost always had to have been in a Super Bowl or won a league MVP. And Josh is just like, oh, we think he'll do both of those one day. So, I, by the way, I'm fine with the ranking, but it's just, it, it, it just shows that Allen is always evaluated a little differently than we tend to evaluate other quarterbacks. And that uh, he moved up is a little odd to me. But well, I, I'm totally kind of, fine. Kind of, yeah. He moved 